Chief Deputy. Delight to serve with you in the chair. And uh, I apologise to the Chamber that the Roads Minister, the Parliamentary Under Secretary, is unavoidably detained, but this is an issue I've been involved with uh, when I was previously Roads Minister, so I hope I'm able to bring some degree of understanding to it. I very much associate myself with the remarks made by the gentleman from the Honourable Gentleman from Glenrothes in relation to the just announced death of Winnie Ewing, uh, who was by any standards a great uh, 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 politician and a great spokesman for her party and her views. Um, and I thank the right honourable member for Orkney and, and Shetland for this motion and uh, for the work he has done on this issue. Uh, if I may, let me start by making a fundamental point. In, in 2017 and 2018, legal changes were made in relation to volumetric concrete mixers in two areas, as he has highlighted. One change was to include volumetric concrete mixers in the operator licensing system, which ensures that VCMs are in the same regulatory regime as most large goods vehicles. And as far as I understand, there's no suggestion or no request to revisit that change. The second change that was made concerned the inclusion of volumetric concrete mixers in the annual heavy vehicle roadworthiness testing regime. Now, they were previously exempted from that, in part due to the difficulty of accommodating large vehicles in testing stations. However, as VCMs are based on a standard HGV chassis, it became clear over time that they could be accommodated on that basis. But it's important to say that no changes were made to the maximum permitted weights for volumetric concrete mixers by regulation. No, no changes were made. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it is important to see that in context because... The Honourable Gentleman, uh, I think the member for Leeds Central, asked the question as to whether some of these recent announcements really uh, 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 you know, should be ignored uh, because they announced, as he read it, higher weights. To which the answer to that is they did not, increase, uh, they did not announce any increase to axle weights. And it's axle weights that we're principally concerned with. Now, inclusion in the annual heavy vehicle test requires a plate displaying the maximum on-road weight of the vehicle. This displays beyond doubt what is the legally accepted maximum weight on roads of a heavy goods vehicle. It's often different from the maximum weight a vehicle is permitted off-road or on private land uh, and which the vehicle chassis can bear. The department recognised that there had been a significant previous period of operations on public roads by some volumetric concrete mixers at higher weights than these unchanged maximum on-roads weights, a situation which others might regard as illegal. It therefore sought views, and which it regarded as illegal, and regards as illegal. It therefore sought views and checked the feasibility of a limited temporary period of operation at higher maximum permitted weights for volumetric uh, concrete mixers. And of course, this is not an uncontested issue. There are other parties, uh, whether they be local authorities or mayoralties or indeed other uh, uh, players in the relevant market who have views that may not directly accord with all the views that have been held and discussed in this debate. Following engagement with parts of the industry in a written consultation, ministers decided to allow an exceptional temporary weight allowance for volumetric concrete mixers for up to 10 years. Uh, other possibilities were considered and discussions were held at that time with parts of the industry, uh, but no other exceptions were ever approved by ministers. The exceptional temporary weight allowance is a significant adaptation for VCMs, which comes despite the extra wear and tear that they impose on road surfaces. Load modelling done by the department in collaboration with National Highways, then Highways England, highlighted a particular risk to bridge structures which affects the durability of this exceptional arrangement. It's therefore not true, uh, uh, as was I think implied by one uh, uh, contributor to this debate, that in some sense National Highways have signed off higher weights. On the contrary, they, they found in their report that those weights sit outside the bridge's load model and therefore unlikely to increase wear on bridges. Well, of course. The um, mentions the particular issue about bridges that might not be able to sustain a higher weight. Why don't they just put a weight limit on the individual bridge and let the heavier vehicles go on the parts of the network that can sustain that load? Well, I mean, that is a separate question. And, uh, of course, local authorities may or may not choose to do what they do. This had to do with the question of what National Highway's view was. And National Highway's view was, as I've said, that there was a particular risk to bridge structures and that that was one of the constraints on the durability and longevity of this arrangement. An initial assessment into road wear by the department suggested that increasing the weight limit for four-axle volumetric concrete mixers from 32 tonnes 
to 38.4 tonnes could increase average road wear by between 110 and 220% per vehicle, the exact impact heavily dependent on the vehicle's loading. The department recently announced the introduction of longer semi-trailers into general use because many operators run out of trailer space before reaching the maximum permitted gross vehicle weight. These longer semi-trailers are up to 2.05 metres longer than a standard trailer designed to carry the same weight as standard trailers. There is therefore no increase in the normal maximum weight or axle weights for vehicles using these longer semi-trailers. The department also recently announced regulations to implement an increase in weight limits for certain alternatively fueled or zero emission vehicles. The weight limit increases up to a maximum of one ton for an alternatively fueled vehicle and a flat two tons for a zero emission vehicle. In all cases, the maximum weight limits for individual axles, again, the key measure, remains unchanged. The vehicle types which are having their weight limits changed by this regulation include articulated lorries and road train combinations with five or six axles normally limited to 40 tonnes and four axle combinations normally limited to 36 or 38 tonnes. No additional weight allowance will apply to the heaviest articulated lorry and road train combinations of 44 tonnes or four axle rigid motor vehicles of 32 tonnes. Now, I note the... Of course... I'm grateful to the Minister. I genuinely am because you know, a number of people in this debate have said we do not understand how the uh, decision was reached. And the Minister has actually given us a very insightful account of how the decision was reached. And those of us who have served in government know how it often works because the focus becomes on the process rather than the outcome. And if I can say to the Minister, I think that's exactly what has happened here. If he were to compare the outcome, the consequences of the changes that were made with the consequences of the regulation as it previously was, on any cost-benefit analysis, does it not look like a slightly unusual move to have taken? Well, uh, I don't think it's true to say that, the, uh, process, that, that there's been a focus on process rather than outcome. On the contrary, it is specifically the concern that there may be an adverse outcome on road wear and tear, on and safety, that uh, uh, it sits behind the concern to maintain the uh, position as it is or has been on vehicle axle loadings. But let me come to the wider point that uh, he touched on in his own speech. I, I noticed the points, and I note the points made by the value of this industry. I also note that the use of VCMs has important commercial advantages over alternatives such as uh, allowing uh, advantages which include an exact quantity of concrete to be produced, and that this has Im influenced the implementation of the temporary weight arrangement. But it's important to say that the 32-ton maximum weight for four or more axle goods vehicles used in normal service is important in the context of maintaining the roads. It's not possible uh, uh, to allow the general circulation of large numbers of overweight rigid goods vehicles freely on the roads. That would risk substantial structural damage and failures. For heavy loads, some other construction-related vehicles, for example, tippers are available as six-axle articulated combinations. They can carry higher loads legally. Uh, now, for VCMs, there has been some design development, and part of the earlier reason for the exemption was in order to allow a period in which there could be design development. But I appreciate that the unladen weight cannot be reduced by the difference between the temporary arrangement and the standard weight limit. Now, the department recognizes the high level of concern uh, that have been expressed in this debate uh, about businesses uh, of those operating VCMs. And I do not think it's actually true to say that those businesses have not uh, received a good hearing. Uh, they've been extremely effective in making their case over the years, in my experience. The number of colleagues referenced by the uh, right honourable member in his early speech testifies to the effectiveness of the APPG and of the sector in mobilising political opinion. Uh, and, of course, those concerns include the viability of what in many cases are small businesses. Rightly so, we understand that. And, of course, it's important to recognise the contribution, as many members have done today, made by the industry more widely in the construction sector. The Department therefore proposes now, and this is the key point that was alerted to by the, averted to by the right honourable member, to seek evidence about whether the current temporary arrangements for special maximum weights for VCMs should be amended. Uh, this comes just over halfway through what was envisaged uh, and what is a temporary 10-year period. The intention is to review the temporary weights and the criteria for them, including how, last, how long uh, they will last. The volumetric concrete mixer arrangement is, after all, unique. Now, in uh, conducting this call for evidence, 
uh, it will be important to consider if there are other situations that are in any way similar to the one that we've discussed today. Uh, National Highways will be commissioned to re-examine the bridge load assessments, which have been raised in this discussion properly, as they relate to VCMs. Uh, it's also important that all potentially interested parties are able to comment and are reached. And therefore, we include, uh, intend that a public call for evidence should be launched during the autumn. And I would expect a wide range of parties to uh, be interested and uh, potentially to make submissions. Can the Minister give way? Of course. Thank you. Thank the Minister for giving way. Can he reassure us that, that this will therefore be wide-ranging and not just focused on weight on roads. We've highlighted that obviously ending up sending two lorries, a pumping lorry as well as a concrete lorry, doubles the weight carried by roads, but also looking at the environmental pollution, the congestion and reducing carbon, which are actually even more important issues these days. Well, she's absolutely right that these are important issues, and it's very important that in conducting a call for evidence it not become a kind of general trawl through the literature, but it retain its focus. And its focus is going to be on the, whether the current temporary arrangements for maximum national weights should be amended. Any uh, proper consideration or evidence that bears on that question directly will, I suspect, although I cannot predict, uh, we'll leave this for the minister and the officials concerned who are doing the final work in determining this, to decide, but I would expect that, that, that proper evidence in those areas uh, would be uh, potentially submissible. Uh, it's important to say that running at higher than usual weights is not without risks. It increases road wear, and some of that road wear increases very rapidly, indeed up to the power of four, with axle load. And of course, there are also risks, including uh, associated, those with, uh, associated with braking and tire wear. Uh, volumetric concrete mixers are used heavily in some urban areas, including central London, alongside uh, cyclists. And as I've said, some had before 2018, and despite the law, operated at higher weights for many years. Uh, there is a concern that overloaded or heavy volumetric concrete mixers may be liable to have higher center of gravity, and that could itself create safety risks. Uh, in some recent examples, VCMs have been stopped and found to have severe defects, including being loaded to a weight exceeding that of even the higher temporary arrangement. So uh, uh, all of those uh, issues and that evidence will have to be uh, taken into account as part of this proper process of consideration. But I hope that the, those present will regard this as a, a useful uh, step forward in considering these issues that the department has decided to hold this uh, call for evidence. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to debate these issues today. Thank you very much.